A lot of you guys have been asking me, how do you actually create your Amazon KDP account, especially if you're just getting started or living outside of the US? So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the entire process step by step. I'll show you exactly what to click and how to fill everything out, even the tricky parts like payment and tax information. And yes, even if you're from outside of the US, I'll show you a few simple tips to get your account approved and make sure you can receive payments from Amazon. So this is a step-by-step -step process on how to create your Amazon KDP account. First, you obviously have to go and sign up. So just go to kdp.amazon.com. Just look up Amazon KDP on Google and it's the first thing that's going to show up. If you already have an account, you click sign in. If you're new, click join KDP to create your account, which is this site right here. So once again, click join KDP. Once you do so, it'll take you to a page like this, which you just go and simply fill out your details. So the email you use for KDP doesn't have to be the same as your Amazon account. In fact, I think it's best to be separated, although if you do use the same one, it doesn't really matter too much. But once you enter your name, email, your password, just click on create your KDP account, go through the CAPTCHA, so answer the puzzle to prove you're not a robot. Once you solve that, click confirm and move on. You have to verify your email, so Amazon will send a code to your email, Type the code on the KDP page, it looks like this. And then once you're done, click verify. Next, you wanna enter your mobile number for two-step verification. Once you add your number, you will receive a code. You can enter the code. By the way, I just use a Google Voice number if you need an additional number to add for this, like if you don't wanna use your other number for whatever reason. And Google Voice number has been working completely fine for me. It's just a $10 one-time payment to get the number. You can also use many other sites like Google Voice to get a new number. Anyways, once you do so, just click on add mobile number. Read through the terms and condition, click on agree. Once you do so, you'll get to the KDP dashboard. So far, everything is extremely simple. It's literally the step-by-step -step process you go through when you're signing up for pretty much anything. But from here, you have to complete a few more steps so you can publish books and actually start getting paid. Because when you first log in, it's gonna still say that you have to complete your account information. So we're still not done yet. So first, you wanna click here at the top. It says your account. Once you click on it, Amazon might ask you to sign in again. So just use the exact same login you just created and click sign in. Once again, you might have to verify your email, but just go through that and submit the code. You also might have to do a two-step verification for your phone number that you entered, but just do that. And now we get to filling out the rest of the section. So you wanna fill out essentially your account, account details, the payment information, and the tax information. So let's start with your identity here, right? So you wanna enter your details that'll match your government ID. So that'll be your legal name, address, date of birth, and the phone number. Now make sure all of this information is correct because if not, then you might fail the ID verification and you could lose your KDP account. I don't know why exactly some people enter a different information compared to what they have on their government ID, but some people do and they lose their account. So just make sure not to do that. Even if you're signing up under a company such as a LLC or S Corp, as you can see here, it says enter the details of an authorized representative, which means that'll be your name and not the company's name. Next, there'll be a section that says account details. So this is where you can choose between if you're an individual or you are a corporation like a company. So individual is if you don't have a company, right? So if you're just starting out without a business, this is what you select. So basically, you know, if you're like, oh, I don't have a company, which one would you choose? You just choose individual, right? But if you do have a company and you want to register your KDP account under that, then you will be choosing corporation. So if you're signing up as an individual, it'll look like this. As you can see, the account holder is just your name. And if you're signing up as a corporation, then you will have the option to select that, enter your company name. You can enter a new company address if you have that, or that could just be your home address if it's the same. And then you can enter the phone number here. Now, a lot of people ask me, how many KDP accounts can you actually create? And the answer is just one per entity. And the entity is essentially you as a person or your company. So technically, you can create one KDP account under your name, right, as an individual. And then you can also create one account per company that you create. With that being said, though, it's not something I do recommend because there's really no reason for you to create multiple accounts. A lot of people try to do that and they say, oh, it's because I want to separate the risk, right? In case one account gets shut down, you know, I have another one. But that logic does not make sense because number one, if you don't do anything wrong, if you follow Amazon, Amazon's guidelines, your account is not going to get shut down, right? There's always a reason why you lose your account. So that is number one. So if you just follow the rules, you don't need multiple accounts. Number two is if they do choose to close your account because you broke the rules, they can easily find your other accounts. Amazon is pretty smart. They will eventually find you. So even if you separate everything and have one account per company and this and that, there's a pretty good chance that they will find you eventually, right? Some people do get away with it, but my personal advice is just don't break any rules so you don't have to worry about these things. And just 
just focus on one account. With that being said, the only time you would consider creating a new account is if, if you sell your first account, which is something that's possible, right? So a lot of people know that I sold my first KDP account for $820,000. And because I sold the entire account to someone, I don't have a KDP account. So I went on and created a new one under a new company. And that is what I'm building. So this is the only time I do recommend you to create a new account. And even with this, I'm not juggling multiple accounts at the same time. I'm just focusing on one at a time. So anyways, once you fill out that section, the next section is how you're going to get paid, right? So this step is important. It can be confusing, but essentially if your country is listed here, all you do is click your country and then you enter your bank account information and you can get paid, right? But if your country is missing here, don't worry because I'll show you a different method on how you can still get paid. So if you have your country listed, then it's very simple. Select that, enter your bank account information, like it's just basic information. So checking savings, account number, routing number, right? Which business type it is, your date of birth and your account holder name. So basically who owns the account. So if the bank account is under your name, you put that. If the bank account is under a company, you put that. Now, slightly off topic, but this is more so for accounting purposes. If you are signing up under a business account, so you're signing up under your company, you should use a bank account that is under your company. So everything is aligned, right? When you start using your personal bank account, when you're operating as a business, that is called commingling your funds, which is not really good for accounting purposes. So keep everything the same. So if you're signing up as an individual, use your personal bank account, signing up as a company, use your company bank account. Now, what should you do if your bank is not listed, if your country is not even listed in one of the options? Well, there's an easy solution. It's called wise.com. This used to be called TransferWise. Now it's just wise. But wise is where you can create a bank account to receive money, which you can enter in this section when you're signing up to KDP. It's completely free and it's available worldwide. So if you guys wanna check out WISE, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Essentially, you just create an account, get your bank account, and then you enter your WISE bank account detail here. So once you're done filling out your bank information, just click add. So you'll get a confirmation like this, which you can just confirm and you're good to go. By the way, I just wanna say that the KDP website is updating all the time. So the interface might change, like it might look a little different than what you're seeing in this video, but the main points of what you have to do doesn't really change. So I'm confident that you'll be resourceful and can figure it out. All right, so the next is filling out the tax information. So click on complete tax questionnaire. Once again, choose a individual or a business account. Now real quick, as you can see here, individual includes sole proprietor, which means you have no business, you're just using your own name or disregarded entity. So even if you set up a LLC, most of the time people set up a disregarded LLC. So that's technically a company, but you'll be selecting individual here. If you have a S Corp or C Corp or any other setup, then you'll be selecting business. Also real quick, I just wanna give you a disclaimer that this is my understanding of how you set it up. This is how I set it up, right? And I had no issues for basically nine years of doing this, but I am not a tax professional. I'm not a lawyer. So, you know, please don't take this as like a 100% correct information. I'm just sharing with you what I've learned and what I am doing. So next select if you are a US citizen or not. If you're a US citizen, you enter your full name, your social security number, or if you're using a company, then you enter your tax identification number. Usually you get what's called a EIN if you have a company, so you will be entering that. If you don't have a company, you just enter your social security number. Now you might be thinking, why does Amazon need my social security number or tax information? Well, that's because they're paying you and every time they pay you, they have to report it to the government. So this is for tax purposes. So that was if you were a US citizen. If you're not a US citizen, It'll look a little different. So you select no here and you can answer if you're acting as an intermediary agent or other person receiving payment. 99.9% .9 of the time you are answering no here, right? If you're an agency, then you will select yes, but I would assume most people aren't that. So you just select no and then enter your tax information here. Then you enter the country of citizenship and you enter the permanent address. Maybe your permanent address is in a different country compared to your citizenship, but you just enter whatever is correct information. So once you're done with that, you just click on save and you are good to go. So after you fill that out, you'll see that the error message or you know the message saying your account is not complete is gone. And the last thing I wanna show you is how you can check if you're making sales, which all you have to do is click on reports and you can get to the Rotis estimator. And uh, essentially if you're making sales, it'll show up here. 
All right, that was a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create your Amazon KDP account. The next step is to actually start publishing your book. If you need help with a beginner-friendly tutorial on how to do that, I do have a complete Amazon KDP tutorial for beginners. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. And if you want more than just a compilation of video lessons and you want actual coaching and have a coach who's done it before, who has great results themselves, to walk you through this process step-by-step -step to help you build a successful Amazon KDP business, you can consider applying for our coaching program. So it's the first link in the description below it'll take you to a page like this you can fill out a form for a free 30 minute strategy session and see if this program is a good fit for you now we don't work with everyone we do reject a lot of people so if you do get rejected i'm sorry i still have a lot of free videos on youtube so you can go and follow that but if you do get accepted and you decide to join the program i'll be excited to see you inside so with that being said if you enjoyed this video leave a like subscribe thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one